Hello, you're back with Dave and Tim at the Single Malt Review as we go once more into the Highlands. Yes, thank you for joining us once again. Mm. Um, way up in the Highlands this time, up Aberdeen Way, mm. quite away from most other distilleries. Um, we're going to have a look at the Ardmore, specifically the Ardmore tradition. Um, peated, they've said, but um, if you didn't know Ardmore was peated, you probably shouldn't be reaching for that mm. bottle because that is... Oof, that is the card Ardmore has to play. Um, it was the original peated, well not the original, there used to be a great many peated mainland whiskies, almost all of them, uh, back when they did their own maltings. Um, but it was the original modern times peated yeah. mainland whisky. It was just about the only one you could get. Uh, nowadays not so much because uh, more sort of um, progressive places like Ben Reick and even Glendronic and a great many, great many now, are doing their forays into peated mainland whiskey and are doing it rather well. So uh, Ardmore no longer stands on its own in terms of its stylistic choices. Uh, this bottle um, is a travel retail one, but obviously some have uh, escaped travel retail because that's not where I got this one. Judging by the back of this label, this mm. is um, was was destined for Frankfurt, but didn't quite make it because we are um, looking at Mit Farbstoff, Farben just term it Med Caramel, mm. which tells us something mm. pretty important, which they let you know in Germany. Here's Farbstoff, artificial colouring. It is coloured with caramel. And even though it's not really an additive that changes the flavour, you've got to declare mm -hmm. it. So it is, yeah, not sure filtered, but it is artificially coloured, which yeah. is a curiosity. So that's that was pretty clear mm -hmm. and easy to read, which is an interesting whiskey fact on its own. Yeah. In Germany, in German markets, you have to declare mm -hmm. everything you've put into the bottle, and that includes colouring, mint mm -hmm. caramel, as they call it, caramel colouring. Yeah. Um, E1 something something something, whatever the code is, mm -hmm. I don't know it off by heart. Um, not that important, but it's always, always useful um, to get hold of a... German market bottle yeah. um, if you want to know all the uh, cheat sheets on a whiskey because they will declare everything in there. Mm. So um, what uh, we're really dealing with is probably a whiskey, if I had to ballpark it I'd say somewhere between 8 and 10 mm. years old, maybe mm, yeah, 8 and 10 years old. I think if it was significantly older they would have Pack it up mm. and put a ten years on there, <laughs> and got it all got it all over that particular hill. For whatever reason, they haven't, um, and this is what we have. So yeah, off the top of my head, eight to ten. So primarily mm. matured in bourbon casks, is that right? Yes, this one is spends the majority of its life in bourbon casks, mm. but then it is racked into quarter casks mm. for just a bit of a uh, bit of a boost, bit of a razzle up before it's bottled. Um, into uh, yeah those, those quarter casks which will sort of inject a little bit more uh, oak character mm. into there before they're ready to mm. sell. So it's sort of just been supercharged at the end before mm. it goes out to, to market there. But um, not in any way a particularly complex um, wood sort of a treatment, mm. you have to say. It's probably mm. American bourbon wood and then a bit more American bourbon oh. wood, just a bit more, a bit more mm. of it. Certainly not a whiskey that sports a great deal of sherry character. Yeah, for an artificially coloured whiskey, that's still quite bright and clear, so it mm. must have been fairly coloured to be, begin with. They'll be, they'll be pretty restrained in yeah. the color they're putting in. It would have been a very, very light whiskey to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, mm. um, it is the peated mainland, and it doesn't muck around letting it you is know. It's a brackish, swampy, mudflats kind of a peat. Yeah, it's a... Mm. Though it may share the peated characteristic with the Isla whiskies, it's quite interesting in that that peat manifests in very, very, very different ways. Mm. Because the peat, I mean, they're both peat, um, but the mainland peat is comprised of very, very different stuff mm. than the Isla peat. Most Isla peat is marine in origin, so it is made up of things like seaweed and shellfish and whatever else. Um, that has been sort of brought up mm. over the over the many many thousands or even close to millions of years. Um, mainland peat is not from these marine origins, typically anyway. Mm. So it's a much. It doesn't give you that fishy, iodiney, mm. bacony character that you get from the Isla stuff. It's much more of a sort of coal smoke and wood smoke is what I get yeah. out of that. It's much much drier in many ways, cleaner. Um, less multi-dimensional kind of a thing and mm. it's it's what makes Ardmore one of those 
unmistakable whiskies. It's like one of those sort of super easy to blind taste yeah. whiskies, which there are so so very few of these days. It's definitely woody and coal smoky, but it's got a little bit of an oceanic quality to it, a bit of like a maybe a mangrove, sort of like a dank forest floor with a little mm. salt thrown in. That's extremely mm. specific. I don't yeah. know if I've been in a mangrove, but oh. I'll I'll keep my nose open next time I'm next time mm. I'm there. Um yeah, to me it is it's pretty not to say it's one dimensional, but mm. it's pretty lean on the nose. There's some pretty dry but very, very evident oak. So yeah. some freshly freshly um sawn oak. Or even a little bit of sawdust almost. Mm. Quite quite a dry, quite a woody nose. And then there's that very um very dry, very clean coal wood mm. smoke from the peat. And Everything else is kind of hiding behind those two yeah. elements. We'll probably find it as we add water, I, I think. I don't think um, this is staggeringly heavily peated, but if there was any more peat, mm. there'd be just nothing else coming through. I'm, not sure, very light the, on secondary I'm not sure about aromas. the PPMs, but you know, I can mm. find out real fast. Um, keep them busy, Dave. All right. Not all Tim Peru's is in yet. I'm going to dive in, take a sip at the bottled 46% strength. Mm. Moderate peating there, but it's quite a heavy, quick whiplash of peat on the tongue. It doesn't stick around, it does subside quite quickly. It's leading through all kinds of flavours of, um, oh, there's, yeah, not as much sweetness as I'd expect for a Highland whiskey. It's really quite savoury. There's hints of, of all things, roasted veggies, carrots, swedes, a few spices. There's some, maybe some nutmeg, some cinnamon. That's they're very, very savoury. There's bits of cheddar cheese. Wow. There is some, this is, yeah, this is a very uniquely savoury whiskey. That's what happens when I leave Dave along for yeah. too long. Um, Strange things happen. They, they become a, a veritable supermarket of flavours. Mm. Um, I have done some extremely quick and lazy research there, and um, from at first glance, it says the peating level is between... 12 and 14 ppm, hmm. which seems shockingly low for something that is, it's not blow your nuts off, Petey, but um, it is evident, and I think that might be might be old data, or hmm. I don't know. This tastes between, I'd say, between 20 and 30, hmm. was I to make the call, or 15 and 25, if you want to lowball it, but um, yeah, yeah, th this is tastes a wee bit peatier hmm. than that. What's so doing I'm, I'm, I'm catching up, mm. catching up with the palate here. I got roast veggies, cheese, and spices. Be very interested to see how your experience differs. I'm not getting the cheese. I mm. think I'm, I'm with you on the the roast veggies a little bit. It's almost the, um, it's those slightly caramelised, bottom of the pan flavours mm. from the roast veggies is what I'm getting. Um, not to necessarily call that a, it's not so much a herbaceous flavor it's more mm. of a it's more in the savory spectrum as you said you're getting quite a lot of yeah. savory out of there i think there is a there's a malt sweetness there but it's quite mm. Mm. no it's it gets stronger sort of the more you you have of it though the, the peat is the first thing you taste and smell i think it sort of begins to after a few sips it subsides for me and there is quite a barley barley sweetness in there for me the i think some of the some of the more interesting flavors you're getting is because that particular that particular smoke i think cues people to think of different things based on yeah. their experiences with that particular element of smokiness. I think Isla smoke is something that people wouldn't normally have encountered in its mm. raw form. But this is almost like a like a campfire or cooking yeah. smoke or anything like that. Um, which probably brings people to mind of sort of foodier kind of stuff. So I see where you're going. Yeah, I think the saltiness combined with some oily weight and just a hint of sweetness is what's mm. giving that cheese cheddar cheese uh, yeah. aspect um but it's a very it's it's unmistakably a young whiskey mm. um i can i can hear that you know taste that young almost almost in my in my book immature spirit there but at the same time those it's, notes through. it's very different to a lot of other young mm. bourbon cask matured whiskies we've had in recent it's, reviews yeah. that's Ardmore there's one thing you can say about it it is very different to almost mm. anything um, it is a whiskey that stands out there all on its own um, 
they are clearly not that interested in producing aged whiskey because mm. you can't even, I think, officially get um, age statement Ardmore, or at least not easily anymore. Mm. This is they have this one, and they have the Legacy, which is very very similar to this. It's just only forty percent. I think that's the standard domestic market and one, whereas most, this is more of a travel retail. Most of the rest then goes into blends. Yeah, well, a one blend specifically. Mm. You'd think it's a, um, it's not a very versatile blender given that it's so odd and peated, mm. and um, it really only goes into one thing, which is teachers, mm. um, which I made that slightly, um, which, I, which I lampooned a little bit um, on my video about silly labels. Uh, but I do actually drink quite a lot of teachers. I think it's quite a solid, solid, cheaper blend. And that is where the majority of Ardmore goes because, as, mm. as teacher says, contains a high proportion of peated malts, and that is 100% Ardmore. So that's sort of what it, what it exists to do. And it doesn't do a great deal else beyond these few bottlings now and again. You can get it in independence. You know, they're not very precious about their casks. You'll see plenty of people bottling Ardmore now and then. Um, I think I most recently saw in Old Malt Cask by Hunter Lang yeah. uh, with a 16 year old Ardmore and that was a bit of a revelation to see exactly what older Ardmore tasted like. Yeah. Um, that may be some time before I get to try that again. But at any rate, scores for this one, it's a whiskey that I can enjoy but it in no way really blows me away or pricks my interest hmm. that much. It's only a 78 for me. It's just... Ooh, I don't know. It's there's, there's whiskies with more and whiskies with less, mm. and despite the name, uh, this this particular Ardmore is just a bit of a whiskey with less. Mm. Um, versatile from what it is, perfectly nice and easy to drink. Um, there's just not a hell of a lot going on. It's lacking mm. in complexity, I think. But what do you what do you feel? There are certainly some curious flavours and impressions I'm getting from this, but overall, I'm simply not enjoying this very mm. much. Aside from some novel flavours. It doesn't have much depth, richness, character. It's not really succeeding as a Highland-style whiskey. It's yeah. not succeeding as a fresh, lively bourbon cask whiskey. I, it's not without merit, uh, but I rate it a 70. Yeah, it's just, it's a little bit, for something that shouldn't be, you know, repeated, interesting, stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's just a wee bit drab. It's yeah. just a bit uninteresting in its flavour profile. It's just not a very... Yeah, it just seems to be towing the line a little bit. Um, I think fans of Ardmore know who they are, and they'll really, really like it, because yeah. it is perfectly, classically Ardmore. I just think that's a pretty small room full of people. But at any rate, um, not a bad whiskey by any mm. means, but not one that's got us particularly particularly excited. But never mind, we will um, we'll dial up the peat for the next mm. level, and that should, get us, that should get us going, I think. So we'll be right back with that one. Slanger, keep safe. We'll be right back.